Hi everyone, my name's Hamish and today we're starting a new video series called PC for Beginners. You can tell by that giant logo behind me. Anyway, if you're new to the whole PC thing, you probably have a lot of questions, naturally, or like me, you've been around PCs for a while and it's been an uncomfortable length of time so you can't ask those questions that you probably should already know the answer to. In any case, in these videos you'll be hearing from experienced developers because they're very, very smart and they'll be taking us through all of the basics that you need to know to get the most out of your PC. So today we're going to be focusing on the DirectX Diagnostic Tool, or DXDiag, so you can find out exactly what's going under the hood of your machine, whether that be so you can brag online, because we like to do that, or so you can add a bit more information to your support tickets so developers on our side can do their job a little bit better. Alright, let's go. Alright, so today we want to go over DX Diag. I kind of know how it works, but I thought I'd bring someone in who knows a whole bunch more than I do about PCs and, and the technical side of it. So, who are you and, and, and what do you do? I mean, I know, but for the people at home. Uh, I'm uh, Gregor Ernstein. Uh, I work here at Massive uh, as a senior tech programmer. Mm -hmm. I've been with Massive for over 10 years now, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm uh, I have been working on World in Conflict, uh, Far Cry 3, and The Division, mm -hmm. and currently working on The Division 2. Nice. You're a hardcore PC guy. Yes, uh, I, I play PC at home. I'm yeah. currently planning on building a new PC. Nice. Uh, my first uh, hardline water cooling, so it's going to be interesting. All right, so let's get stuck into DX Diag. Yeah, let's do it. All right, so where do we start? How do you open up this thing? Uh, yeah, you go to the Windows uh, Start menu and type DX Diag. You can you can directly go to the to the Run menu in Windows Seven, I assume. Uh, okay. So you uh, start up like the Start menu, and then there's like a Run option that which opens a smaller window. Mm -hmm. And in that window, uh, you just type DX Diag, and that should okay. open it. But if you're running Windows 10, it's no problem. Just type in yep. DX Diag. All right. Cool. Um, obviously, there's a lot of tabs. What are yeah. the things that are interesting to people that they should be looking at? I would say like the very first page is already quite interesting. Uh, it shows you your operating system um, and uh, stuff like your main CPU. Mm -hmm. um, so your main processor, your available RAM or your maximum RAM, um, and also if you support DirectX 12 or if you have like older graphics card, it might only show DirectX 11 here. Uh, when it says display, what are we looking at here? But it, it shows you your graphics card okay. um, and uh, I guess the manufacturer NVIDIA in this case. Um, it shows you your uh, GPU memory, the VRAM, mm -hmm. and can we see anything more interesting? Oh yeah, your current display resolution, which is and the refresh rate, which can be quite interesting. Yeah, you know, the refresh rate thing is interesting because a lot of I know that when you set up a new monitor, I set up a, a 144 for the first time, and you know to make sure it was actually running at 144, like I wasn't entirely sure. Yeah. Um, but you could check in here and yeah, this will show you the display. current uh, refresh rate of okay. your display. So what other tabs do we have here? There's four sound tabs. I guess you have a. <laughs> a couple of uh, I do have audio, a few USB devices. devices, audio devices. Yeah, they show up here as well. So that one's a virtual one, which uh, which also shows up. So that it even shows software based. Yeah, uh, like these virtual ones, they for a lot of other programs within the system, mm -hmm. they appear as as if they are hardware mm -hmm. um, sound uh, cards, uh, and therefore this reports them as the system would see it. Okay. Cool. So even if it's a virtual one, it will show up, yeah. Cool. From a developer perspective, why is DX Diag interesting? So often we we see crashes with our software or uh, for very specific people. Um, like there is a the, a crash on a on a PC build, and it uses a very strange combination of this specific graphics mm -hmm. card with this amount of memory yeah. and that CPU. And the, the, the same problem might not show up if you have slightly different hardware. Often um, we use um, like certain graphics cards, but not too much like the really old ones. 
we do have uh, uh, testing teams that are have like whole um, rooms just set up with different computers to test these things. Mm -hmm. But you cannot cover everything. You might miss something, and uh, in a very specific combination, you have a crash. Okay. In that case, if you're reporting a crash that is happening for, to you, and it's maybe not that widespread then always uh, include um, the information from the diag diagnostics tool. That's what I was going to say, is um, a lot of people, maybe they don't even use DxDiag before, they get a question from the support team asking, you know, what GPU are you running? What kind of CPU are you running? Um, and if, you, if you've never used DxDiag before, maybe you, you know, try and open up your PC and have a look and try and find a stamp or that sort of thing, but you really don't need to. Yeah, um, you how, can. How can you share that information? So there's this uh, button here on the on the bottom, mm -hmm. save all information, okay. and it just opens up a, a new dialog where you can choose where to save mm -hmm. uh, your TXT file, and by default it will give you already a name, and then uh, you can save it right there. So it's basically a text file with most of the information, or all of the information that you've seen in the uh, UI. I think the the easiest way to see it is like we normally. When, when it's a crash that we cannot reproduce, mm -hmm. then we try to get the hardware that this happened on and try to reproduce it specifically on that hardware. Perfect. Well, thank you so much for uh, the information. I actually, while I thought that I knew all of this stuff, I, I learned a few things. Cool. Okay. Thanks, Dan. Yeah, you're welcome. All right, so I hope you learned something from today's video, but if you feel like you didn't, please let us know if there's something you'd like us to cover that's PC specific down in the comments below. We can find out from developers exactly how things like graphics drivers work, or what should I be doing with my antivirus in 2019? Because I have absolutely no idea. Anyway, that's gonna be all for today. We'll see you all again really soon for some more PC for beginners.